There's no such thing as cheating in art. Hey guys, welcome to Let's Create Something. Let's talk about tracing. Now, like I said in the beginning, there's no such thing as cheating in art. You know, a lot of people like to think using projectors or tracing or whatever is cheating. But that's like saying, I'm gonna go dig a hole, but I'm not gonna use a shovel because that would be cheating. So I'm gonna dig it with my hands because that makes it mean more or makes it real. That's a real hole. If you use a shovel, that ain't no real hole unless you use your hands. And that's basically what it is. It comes down to a technology thing of whether you're gonna use it or not. And basically, you know, if you're looking at people who look at at something and then draw it, they're pretty much doing, they're tracing it. They're tracing what they see versus just putting a paper over it and tracing it. It's the same thing. In art class, they would, you know, give you something to draw and you'd have the whole three hours to draw the whatever it was. And then when you were done, you could leave. Well, I would stay the whole three hours and finish half of my drawing. And it was the half I finished, I liked, I was happy with, but it took me three hours to do that. And that's just, that's just way too long. It's not practical. So I use tracing paper a lot. Tracing paper. I like to use the pads because um, they come in different sizes. I like to get the big ones so I could section it out. But they also do the rolls, like the architectural rolls. I sometimes like to use those just because you can make it as long as you want. But I mostly use the pads. Now I mostly use tracing paper just to build a base of whatever, just to start, get a rough outline of whatever I'm doing. Because drawing, like I said, takes me hours. It takes me forever. And instead of just spending, you know, three to five hours on the drawing, I can just spend, you know, 15 to 30 minutes and then get to the painting part because I'm really good at the painting part. I'm really actually pretty fast at the painting part. It's usually the drawing that takes me hours and hours and hours. And then I realized after doing this for a while, why not? I could just trace it. It would be so much quicker and I could just, you know, really focus on the little details and focus on the painting part, which is the important part. And like I said in another video, there is, or no, it was this video, um, <laughs> that there is no cheating. There is no cheating in art. It's just the end product. Did the end come out the way you wanted it to come out? That's pretty much it. There is no race. There is no tortoise in the hair. And no, no, no. There's like, what is at the end? That's all that matters is what did you pull out of all this? And that's really all that people care about. People don't care about if you did it freehand or whatever. It's there is no cheating, guys. There's no such thing as cheating. So I'm going to show you how to use tracing paper. I highly recommend it if you have problem with drawing or you're struggling or you feel like most people that they can't draw, you know, whatsoever. So this is how I use tracing paper. So let's say I was going to do a drawing or a painting or whatever of a whale. So I'd look up a whale and then I would trace the outline just to get a rough base. So something like this. So I traced a whale to get a rough outline. I chose a blue whale, whatever, um, to get a rough outline. Like I said, I didn't like do the finite details or anything. I just want to get a rough. Now, this technique I actually, I actually learned um, in elementary school, oddly enough, in like a little art thing, but I remembered it and it stuck with me. It's where you, once you have something drawn, you actually flip the paper over, redrawn on the back side, and then you flip it over again and then retrace it and it makes an imprint on the pad. So what you wanna do is obviously first you get your drawing. So I have the whale drawing here and then I flip it over and then I outline it. Now you wanna outline it, you know, really, really dark because what you're doing is you're imprinting the pencil graphite onto the pad. So you kinda need a little extra. So you wanna press a little harder. Then when you're done, you flip it over and then you just do an outline. I kinda just scribble over it because it doesn't really matter. You just, you already have the line on the back. So it doesn't matter if you miss or go over. You just press kind of all hard, but you don't want to rip the paper and you just outline it again. And then when you lift the paper, just like that, you have an outline of it and it's really easy. And then from there, you can take it like I did. And I just added more lines and worked on it and created this. So like I said, you know, creating that whale piece would have taken me a lot longer had I tried to draw the whale body from scratch or from nothing. So there you go. I ended up making something I really liked a lot quicker. And if I wanted to redo it or like I messed up on the canvas or paper, or I just wanted to make a new version of it, I always have that paper with me so I can redo it again and not have to worry about getting the drawing just like I did before or doing it just right. I do this all the time. I have stacks and stacks of booklets of tracing paper of different drawings that I can reuse over and over again. And I do reuse them. It's super useful. I highly recommend using tracing paper. You know, I really use tracing paper for watercolor. I do watercolor and 
like you can't draw out on the paper. I need to erase a lot. I can't have smudges and stuff. It looks bad, it stays. So this is a great way to do watercolor drawings without screwing up the paper and having to, you know, erase and smudge it up and get those dark marks. This is a great way to get a pre-drawing on the paper to do your watercolor without screwing up the paper too much. You can also do this on canvas. Uh, don't use pencil. You never draw or use pencil on a canvas because it doesn't matter if you cover it with 50 layers of paint. Eventually, whether it's a day, a week, months, or years, that pencil line will soak through and it will be seen on the top. It's just a matter of time. I don't know why it does this. It's just the way lead or graphite works. So you want to use uh, soft charcoal, vine charcoal, and you can do the same technique. You just do a drawing and then when you flip it over, instead of using graphite or pencil on the back, you just use soft vine charcoal to trace it and then you put it on the canvas and then you retrace it on there and it works. I do it all the time. Again, it's a great way to get a quick drawing down, a good base down to start your painting. So you can focus more on the painting, which again is the end product, which is the most important part. Nobody cares about what you did on the drawing. All they care about is how it looks at the end. So there you go, that's how you use tracing paper. You know, you can use it in a wide range of ways. You know, that's just one way I use it. But again, I highly recommend you use tracing paper, especially if you have a problem with drawing. It isn't cheating. There's no such thing as cheating in art. And anyone who says any differently is just harboring some weird emotions about whatever, you know? And it, there really is no cheating in art. There's no cheating in art. Don't let anybody fool you or lie to you or be caught up in that fear. Like, oh, I can't let people know I trace. Like, and of course, people trace it happens it should happen because it makes it better so you can focus on the end product so again i hope this has been informative if you like these videos don't forget to subscribe look for new videos out weekly and yeah go create something use tracing paper